Amen. Okay, thank you, Cheryl. That's good. And we want to turn in our Bibles tonight to the book of 1 John in chapter 2. And uh, we'll be reading verse 18 as a text. Little children, it is the last time that ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Uh, the Bible tells us more about Antichrist than any other figure in the scripture except the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so evidently the Lord wants us to know something about uh, this man and uh, you know, what is going to happen whenever he comes. Those who trust in Christ the Savior will be left behind whenever the rapture occurs. And so for those who are left behind, uh, to help you not to be deceived, we're going to look at scripture for a portrait of the Antichrist. And so like a criminal with many aliases, we see him throughout scripture. He is seen in Exodus as a Pharaoh, the defier of God the one who uh, treats God's people cruel. In the book of Job, uh, he's a crooked serpent, Job 26 and verse 3. Psalms calls him the bloody and deceitful man, Psalm 5 and verse 6. The man of the earth, in chapter 10, verse 18. Uh, he's called... Uh, the head over many countries in uh, Psalm 110, verse 6. Isaiah calls him the Assyrian, the rod of God's anger, in chapter 10, verse 5. Jeremiah describes him as the, the destroyer of the Gentiles in chapter 4, verse 7. Ezekiel says that he's the profane, wicked prince of Israel in chapter 21 and verse 25. Daniel describes him fully and outlines his career for us. Hosea calls him the king of princes in chapter 8, verse 10. Amos says he's the adversary who shall break Israel's strength and spoil her palaces in chapter 3, verse 11. Zechariah says he's the idle shepherd upon whom is pronounced God's woe and upon whom descends his judgment. Chapter 11, verse 17. Now all these lines of prophecy, and many more besides them, flow throughout Scripture, and they culminate in the last book uh, of the Bible, the Revelation, where Antichrist is simply known as the beast. First of all, <clears throat> first of all, the Antichrist as a person. Only John uses the name Antichrist. And uh, we see him in the chapter 2, verse 18, our text, and then uh, also in uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 3, and also 2 John 7. Paul calls him that man of sin, the son of perdition. And so the Antichrist will be a Jew. Now, we don't have one scripture in the Bible that uh, definitely tells us that Antichrist will be a Jew. However, there are scriptures that give a very strong hint in that direction. And uh, Daniel 9, verse 26, he's called the Prince of Israel. It's unthinkable that Israel would choose as their prince, uh, as their leader, one who is not a Jew. And then in John 5, verse 43, another, the Bible says, another shall come in his own name. And another means of the same kind. And so Jesus himself was a Jew, so therefore we are led to believe here uh, that uh, Antichrist would also be a Jew. The Antichrist will be a man, yet more than a man, just as Jesus was a man. 
Jesus was just as much man as he was yep. God and just as much God as he was man. Yep. He was both at the very same time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Antichrist will be Superman. Of whom the world is even now looking for. Mm -hmm. Some years ago, uh, a leader of the European Union said this, we need a man, a leader of sufficient stature to command our allegiance and to lift the nations out of our economic and political morass. If he be a god or a devil, we will follow him. That was Henry Speck who said that. He'll come out of a small, insignificant nation of the revived Roman Empire, according to Daniel 7 and verse 8. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Uh, a little horn is another name for the Antichrist. And behold, there came up among them another little horn, and behold, there came uh, uh, before whom uh, were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like a man, and their mouth speaking great things. And so horns in scripture, in prophecy, uh, describes kings as a name of kings and kingdoms. There'll be a raiser of taxes in Daniel 11, verse 20. When he comes and requires taxes to be raised, that will symbolize the beginning of the Roman Empire. Caesar Augustus sent a decree that all the world should be taxed. And when this happens again, Antichrist will have come. Isaiah calls him the Assyrian. The Assyrian was an ancient enemy of Israel. Habakkuk calls him the Chaldean, and he uses the name of an ancient or contemporary conqueror who has characteristics similar to those of an Antichrist. Also, the Antichrist has a peacemaker, Revelation 6 and verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Notice the bow has no arrows. So therefore, Antichrist will not come uh, as a warrior. He will not come uh, seeking to overtake by force the kingdoms of the world. The Bible says they will be given to him. Yeah. And so uh, he will not display such uh, violence for uh, much of the first uh, three and a half years of uh, the time that he is on the earth. And so <clears throat> he'll make a covenant with Israel to protect her and permit her to build the temple. He will temporarily solve the Mideast crisis. He's going to be uh, signing a, a covenant which signals the beginning of the seven years of tribulation known as the day of the Lord. And so <clears throat> the Bible describes him as an intellectual genius. He'll be the devil's imitation of that blessed one in whom are hid all the, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Colossians 2 and verse 3. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. Bernie Sanders is not the Antichrist. Right. The Antichrist will display intelligence and uh, is such a tremendous intelligence that it will, it will astound the world. He's going to be an oratorical genius, Daniel 7, verse 20. He has a mouth that spake very great things. He's going to be a wizard with words. Revelation 13, verse 2 says that his mouth of his mouth 
as a mouth of a lion. The voice of the lion excels that of any other beast. Now, Hitler was a prototype of Antichrist. In so many ways, Hitler will be, uh, Hitler was much uh, like Antichrist. Hitler uh, had a great oratorical ability because Hitler was demon possessed when he was 15 years old. When Hitler was uh, 15 years old, he joined the Thule Society, which is an occultic society. And his eyes turned from brown to blue. That's not uncommon in people who are demon possessed. Their eye color changes very often. And so uh, uh, Hitler would start out very slowly in his addresses to the German people. And one of his lieutenants would uh, introduce him. He would start out very slow. He would build. And he would build. And he usually spoke about two hours. And uh, by the time he got to, to the end of his address, he had uh, tens of thousands of Germans on their feet. And uh, they were hollering, today Germany, tomorrow the world. And they believed that. He had tremendous ability to sway the masses. Uh, when Antichrist speaks, he's going to be like, remember that advertisement? that was on the TV some years ago, uh, whenever E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Whenever, whenever the Antichrist speaks, everyone's going to listen to him. He's going to have tremendous oratorical abilities. And uh, so he was a prototype of the man of sin. He's going to be a commercial genius. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper. Revelation 13, verse 16 says that uh, uh, there's going to be a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads of those who are living in that period of time. And if one does not take that mark, they will not be able to buy or sell anything. And do you fully grasp the difficulty of living in a world where you can't sell your home, you can't buy a home. You can't buy a cup of coffee. You can't buy an automobile. You can't sell anything. It'll be that kind of a time. And it'll be that kind of a situation. And so <clears throat> everything is going to be nationalized. No one buys or sells without his permission. And uh, he's going to be a military genius. He's going to be uh, Grant and Lee and Schwarzkopf and Patton all rolled into one. He's going to be a military genius. The Bible says he shall destroy wonderfully. Daniel 8 verse 24, he shall sweep everything before him. And Revelation 13 4 says, who is able to make war with him? He's going to be so powerful and such a military leader that uh, it's going to be difficult to find anyone who's going to make war with him successfully. He's going to be a religious genius. He's going to proclaim himself to be God, demanding honor shown to him. Sitting in the temple shall show himself forth that he is God. The devil has always wanted man's worship. Yes. And one day he's going to sit in the temple temporarily. And he's going to show himself and he's going to believe and others are going to believe that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 4. He's going to make a covenant with Israel to protect her and permit her to rebuild the temple. He will temporarily solve the Mideast crisis. And it's the signing of this covenant which signals the beginning 
of the seven years of tribulation known as the day of the Lord. The Antichrist as a peace breaker. We see him first as a peacemaker when he comes on the scene. He's going to have a, uh, it's going to be a wonderful time of, uh, of enemies, old enemies, centuries and centuries old. We're going to come together and there's going to be a measure of peace. But halfway through the tribulation period, after three and a half years, he's going to be a peace breaker according to Daniel 9 and verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So the tribulation reaches his 42nd month, and the Antichrist rips off his mask and shows himself as the tormentor of Israel. Then Antichrist, the prisoner. Revelation 19, verse 20. The beast and false prophet. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. The Antichrist has accomplished his purpose as an instrument of judgment. God has allowed Satan to have his way in the world. But only for a period of time. Only for a short period of time. Right. And uh, God says enough. That's enough. God has a timetable. Mm -hmm. And it will work according to God's timetable. Yes. The Antichrist will think that he is in charge of things now. Not so. God's always in charge. He's allowing Antichrist to fulfill his purpose for him, which is judgment. Second Thessalonians. The Bible says, Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. No one is destroyed with the brightness of his coming except the Antichrist. God has reserved that. Has reserved that for Antichrist. Antichrist will be cast into hell along with the false prophet. And also some good people in hell. Some Baptists. Some uh, religious people. But lost. Yes. Remember Nic Nicodemus? He was religious, but he was lost. You know what Jesus told him? He said, uh, uh, you're going to uh, uh, not be able to go to heaven without being born again. Mm -hmm. And so those who have not been born again will not go to heaven. Yeah. Maybe they're members of a church. Maybe they have been baptized, but they've never been born again. And so, uh, religious but lost people, along with murderers and thieves and drunkards and all who reject Christ as Savior. What a crowd. 2 Peter 3 and verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, see that you look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found in him in peace, without spot and blameless. The first time Jesus came, he came humbly in a manger. When he comes back, he's going to be riding, riding a white horse. Yes. The white horse is a symbol of one who conquers mm -hmm. in Scripture. The first time he came as a suffering savior, the second time he comes, he's going to come as a king in all of his glory. Amen. The first time Jesus came, he wore a crown of thorns. He'll never wear another crown of thorns. Yes. The second time Jesus comes, 
He's going to wear many crowns according to Revelation chapter 19. Yeah. So I'm going to draw a picture. It's a, uh, uh, a picture of, the, of uh, on the bottom part of the picture would be a picture of an ocean scene. Uh, the Bible uh, tells us that Antichrist will rise out of the sea. And the sea in Scripture is a symbol of the Gentile nations. And uh, the Bible says Jesus will come with wearing many crowns. So I'll have Jesus in the in the clouds, and he's going to be wearing uh, the crown. So Cheryl, you come on up, and uh, we'll have all the lights out. 